Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> That was a bad hook set, but here we are. Ooh. Oh, wow. Mm, that was really good. Hello and welcome back everybody and or anybody. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Christian and this is Make Time for Fishing. I am back out today. Uh, it was a cold morning. I'm filming this intro after the fishing. Uh, I had a good day. Started out a little bit slow, but um, ended up being a really solid bite. Started out the trip doing a little tutorial how to situation on uh, using a slip float rig. People really seem to like that. Basically I explained it's a really good introductory rig to sheep's head fishing. The rig can be a little finicky to set up, but it's very effective once you dial it in for the situation you're fishing. There's two things specifically that I think make uh, sheep's head fishing particularly hard or challenging for um, people who are new to it. The first one, of course, being feeling the bite, but the second one's actually finding the fish. And if you're trying to learn how to do both at the same time, it's an uphill battle. Um, you'll figure it out eventually, but you're kind of doing yourself a, a disservice. So why not put on the training wheels, so to speak, and use a slip float rig? That way you don't have to feel for the bite. The bobber is going to show you when you get a bite and uh, it allows you to start searching around until you find the fish. Then once you start figuring out where to find them, you can use other rigs all you want to try to figure out how to feel the bite. And I'm gonna end this video with another catching cook. Uh, I don't know if I've ever done two in a row, but on the last video I asked for some feedback and a lot of people said they like to watch those. I like to make them and I like to cook. So today's video is also sponsored by Toadfish Outfitters. So all the gear you see me use in the video, uh, you can go ahead and look down in the description for my promo code, MT4F10. Gets you 10% off your order with Toadfish but without further ado, I hope you all enjoy the video. Thanks so much for watching. All right, so we we're pulling up to my first stock here, and so I'm going to take a quick second to show you guys what my slip float rig is here today. For the hook, I'm using a one op mosquito hook uh, from Owner, about a foot, maybe 10 inches of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, a half ounce egg sinker. The most important thing, in my opinion, with a slip float rig. Uh, especially when you're going for sheep's head, is to appropriately match the weight with the buoyancy of the float you're using. This is a weighted, I don't know the actual size, but for my experience, it's like a medium sized Billy Bob uh, slip float. And then above that, I have a basic thread bobber stopper. Um, you can buy these at any tackle shop. Essentially, this ends up working out like a suspended Carolina rig with the depth that this suspends at being uh, determined by the distance between your bobber stopper and the start of your Carolina rig. So basically what you'll do is you'll Keep dropping down, trying to figure out just where it hits bottom. Keep sliding it up until you get to that bottom. As you can see, that's barely, barely buoyant, which is great. So it doesn't take a lot of pressure to pull it under because you want that bait dangling right off the bottom so that if a fish eats it, it still has to pull the bobber under to actually finish eating it. You'll know when you're hitting bottom because your bobber won't stand up all the way, or at least not immediately like that, see? So I'm hitting bottom now, so I wanna back that slip float a little bit shallower until the bobber stands up for me. Right there's perfect, at least for this spot. You have to play around with it as you go. So let's get our first bait on. I'm using mud crabs today for bait as I do a lot. Um, I get a lot of comments asking me how to get them. Uh, I catch them by flipping over rocks at low tide. I encourage you to do your own research on that because I don't want to be responsible for you accidentally keeping stone crabs, which look very similar when they're this size. But anyway, so now we're just gonna drop down, see if we get any attention at this first spot. And then we'll continue on to other docks. So what I'm looking for, obviously, is that bobber to move in some way that the current didn't do to it and I didn't. I'm marking a lot right below me here. Don't know what that is. I have to go a little bit deeper. It's about eight feet deep right here. All right, let's see if that gets any attention. I'm kind of just casting it up current and letting it slowly drift back towards me. Oh, I just got tapped. There we go. Oh, that was one. <laughs> You see how subtle that was? It was just the slightest little tap. All right, let's try that exact same depth again because it just got bit. Nope, getting tapped, come on. There we go. 
Not a big one, but that's the first one. <laughs> cool little fish. So he was down there just munching on it, barely tapping it. I might need to bump this up another inch or two. But there's our target species, first one of the day. And uh, I think there's gonna be more down there. Let's, uh, let's give it another shot. Second bite, first fish. What's really cool about using this technique is it basically looks to the fish like a bait just drifting through the current naturally. And it also allows you to cover a lot of ground while staying at the exact same depth. You have to be careful when you're casting this rig so it can get tangled if you're casting too emphatically. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Another little one. A little bigger than the last one. Oh, there we go. Come on. Pull it under. Bait's gotten tapped a couple of times on this drift. Alright, we'll keep a particularly close eye on it this time. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's a better one. I think. No, about the same. <laughs> but he was fighting well. This guy looks to have been caught before. Got a hole in the other side of his mouth. Ooh, and maybe he's been messed up by a dolphin too. It's had a tough go. All right, go get big. Slip float is off to a great start. Currently three for four baits to fish. I like those odds, especially when I'm talking about sheep's head. What's great is I don't have to feel for the bite at all. I don't even have to fish directly below myself like I often prefer to. There we go, there we go. <laughs> Another small one. There we go. Come on, take it under. Take it under. Somebody's pecking at it. There you go. I think it's another, this is a tiny guy, yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'll try one more crab here. If they don't get any bigger, we'll keep moving. But I'm not missing any bites after that first one. Alright, well I think I did enough of a tutorial on the slip float rig. I'm going to switch to uh, a sheep's head jig. Like I said, I really think of the slip float rig as a technique for learning how to find sheep's head. When you're using a uh, strike indicator, you don't have to worry about feeling the bite. Slip float rig definitely has its time and purpose and it's also a whole lot of fun. But right now I'm gonna be fishing a lot of different depths and I need to fish quickly since I don't have a ton of time. I've switched to the split shot rig um, a little while ago. Bite has been slow since that very first uh, little pocket of them I found when I first got out here. Using this foot shot rig, I can maybe find a few bites. Oh, that's good. a solid sheep. Definitely looks like my first legal fish. Let's see if he's worth keeping. All right, he's just over 15 and a half, but the bite has been slow today, so I think I'm gonna keep him. The legal size keeper in South Carolina is 14. Nice. All right, let's get him in the cooler and keep going. sheep. This is a black drum. That's a little black drum. If you didn't know, they look very similar to a sheep's head when they're this small. They don't have teeth and they're actually related to drum. They're not a porgy.
Come back. Small guy, but first fish in a minute here. Dang it, that was very good. So I just missed the biggest bite of the day by far and it bit right away. And uh, I missed it on the split shot rig, at least partially, because I couldn't feel a bite since there's so much slack in my line. So I went ahead and switched to a Sheep Sticker Pro Jig from Bel Air Jigs. And I'm gonna drop back in, see if there's anyone else. Come on back. Ooh. This might be a solid one. Oh yeah. Ooh. That's a very good one. That's a big one. That's a big old sheep's head. I bet he is about 18. I'm gonna put him on the board. If he's under 19 or so, I'll keep him. Yeah, actually he's a little smaller than I thought, 17 and a half. He's going in the cooler as well. Thank you, buddy. It's slow, but um, the quality seems to be there and seems to be picking up a little bit. It's not a big tide swing today, so the high tide's only five, five and a half feet something like that, which is a lower high tide. So I'm thinking I might be able to fish later than I thought. So we'll see if I can keep getting occasional bites like that. I'll have a pretty good day. Okay, this is gonna be the last dock on our tour and then we're making our way back. Been out here for about four hours. Way back, I'll mostly just hit the ones that were productive originally. Very big, but he's somebody. There we go. <laughs> oh, it was just getting tapped. Come on, commit to it. That was a bad hook set, but here we are. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, nice. That's the biggest one yet for sure. That guy might make 20. That's a good sheep's head. All right, let's get this guy on the board and see what he goes. Oof, just a hair under 20, look at that. Nice 19 and uh, call him three quarters sheep's head. Um, not quite a release over 20, but I'm gonna let him go. He's a little big for what I like to keep. And uh, let's see if anyone else is home. That's a good one. I didn't expect that. <laughs> he wasn't fighting that well first. Nice. That looks like another solid keeper. Yeah, I bet he goes 17 or so. 
beautiful fish. It's got that sheep sticker pro jig right in the lip. Popped it out. Yeah, just over 17. Let's get this guy in the uh, cooler with his friends and uh, just keep going. And the bite has been slow, but last several bites I've gotten have been good ones. Wow, she's on him. Just under 18 and a half. He's gonna go in the cooler. Thank you, buddy. All right, let's see if we can find anyone else. Yeah, someone's messing with it. Oh man, that's another solid one. Another decent little keeper. Probably about as big as that first one I kept today. Around 15, give or take. All right, well the bite has started to go a little bit cold and the tide is all the way up, so I'm heading in now. I'll see y'all back at the ramp. I'm gonna clean up those fish. So for today's cooking section of the video, we're going to be doing a smoked sheep's head taco. I'm going to be smoking that on the grill. I'll show you how to do that. And I'm also going to be doing a Mexican street corn. I've never made street corn before, but I have eaten it quite a bit. And I found what looks like a pretty good recipe for what's called a lote. So hopefully it's good. Like I said, we're going to be making a lote today, which is a Mexican street food. It's char grilled corn on the cob with uh, crema sauce and uh, cotija cheese traditionally. Okay, so first we're going to start out with a dry brine for our fish. Um, today I'm using an even mixture of salt and sugar, and then I season it a little bit, toss it in a freezer bag, shake the fish up to evenly coat it, and then I'm going to lay that out on a baking sheet with some tin foil. So then what you do is you go ahead and set it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. You don't want to go much more than 45 minutes or it can get too salty. During the dry browning process, what it's really doing is it's drawing a lot of excess water out of the fish. After you're done with the dry brine, you're gonna take that fish back out of the fridge and you're gonna actually rinse it under the water, ironically, to uh, get as much of that salt and sugar off as you can. After you're done rinsing it off, you're gonna put it back in a drying rack and you're actually gonna dry it overnight in the fridge. Okay, now fast forward to the next day. Uh, it's time to get the charcoal grill going. As you can see, Tater, my dog, is very interested in the grill even without any food on it. While we have that charcoal starting to warm up and ignite, we can go ahead and get a few other things ready. Next, I'm showing off the fish, which is all dried out and has that pellicle formed on the outside. It's a little bit of a shiny layer, which you can kind of see on camera. You can appreciate it a lot 
lot more in person. I'm going to be filling up my smoker box, as you can see. Um, I have Jack Daniels wood chips I just got for Christmas. You can use whatever wood chips you'd like. It's all flavor profile preferences. Whenever you're grilling, it's always important to have the right set of tools. And today I'm actually breaking out the ultimate grill set from Toadfish. This is my first time actually using it, but it felt really nice. And I'll definitely be using it a lot more going forward. As you can see, those charcoals are fully ignited. So it's time to dump them out and arrange them. When you're setting up to smoke in a charcoal grill, it's important to arrange the charcoals all on one side so you can have indirect heat for your meat or in this case fish and when I grill I'm gonna put the fish on the opposite side then I went ahead and placed that smoker box directly on the charcoals just to get it going once that smoker box really started producing a lot of smoke I went ahead and pulled it off of the direct heat then it's time to put the grate on clean it and get that fish smoking make sure you spread that fish out so they all get a nice healthy dose of smoke and that smoker box is conveniently positioned directly beneath it now that the fish is smoking and I have a little extra time on my hands um, because I'm gonna let that fish smoke for about an hour and a half. It's time to go ahead and get the crema mixture going for my elote. Started out this mixture with a half cup each of mayo and sour cream. Then I diced up a clove of garlic, tossed that in there. Then I took a nice handful of parsley from our garden, chopped it up really finely. And then it was time for the main event, the chipotle peppers. Elise and I absolutely love these peppers. We put them in a lot of different things that we cook. They just have so much flavor. It's a canned chipotle pepper and adobo sauce. If you've never tried them before, they're like $1.50 for a can. They go a long ways. I only use one pepper for this whole recipe. Then I zested a whole lime. Um, it takes some time, so be patient. It also adds a lot of flavor, so it's worth it. Then I juiced that lime and mixed everything together. Tasted it. Didn't quite taste right. Needed a little bit of salt and pepper. Added that in and it tasted just right and so we were good to go. About an hour later I went and checked on the fish and it looks like it was done. Uh, smoke had just stopped pouring out and the fish looked beautiful and just in the nick of time because the rain was rolling in. I was planning to cook the corn on the grill itself but with that rain coming I wasn't going to stand out there so I pulled out the grill pan and cooked it on the stove top. Next you're going to completely coat that grilled corn in that crema mixture you just finished making. Then you're going to finish it off with a heavy dusting of crumbled feta cheese. Traditionally the rest recipe calls for cotija cheese, but feta cheese is a fair substitute. Then the final thing, which I wait to do till the end because it only takes a minute and I don't want it to get soggy, I mix up a nice coleslaw for the tacos. Um, it's really simple. There's a coleslaw mix, sour cream, and like I said, a little bit of the juice from the chipotle peppers. Then I plated the whole thing up and topped it with my salsa of choice, which was a mango habanero salsa. Hope you all enjoyed watching me make this, and now all that's left to do is to taste it. All right, so a lot of time goes into smoking these fish, and it's finally time to try it, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a bite. Mm. Good amount of kick from the salsa. A surprising amount of smoke flavor came through with the sheep's head. Sheep's head's a very uh, lean fish, not very oily at all, um, so it doesn't, it's not really the best for smoking, but it really did come through well. Mm, that was really good. All right, now I need to get a bite of this street corn before I forget, because it's gonna get messy. Mmm. Oh, wow. I don't know why I'm surprised. Uh, oh my god, that's really good. Mmm, okay. Alright, I need to stop the video here because I'm about to go to town on this food. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you to Toadfish for uh, sponsoring today's video. And remember to make some time for fishing. Hope to see you next time. Bye.